Hello, today I am replacing the rear upper links uh, in my Model X's suspension with these adjustable links. They're from Unplugged Performance. And you might ask the question, why would I do this? Well, Model X's have a camber problem. It's not necessarily a problem. I don't think Tesla considers it a problem, but it is a problem for owners. Uh, what happens is you see excessive wear on the inside edge of the rear tires. And I just bought new tires all the way around. And the rear tires, previous ones were Continentals, the, you know, the, the stock brand. They weren't the originals, but anyway, they had a lot of wear on the inside edges. And the cause of that is the way Tesla has designed the rear suspension to have a significant amount of a negative camber. Now, camber refers to the tilt of the wheel. Um, if you think about the vertical plane, here, I'll turn around and look at a wheel here. I've, had, I've been doing a little bit of preliminary work here, but if you think about the wheel, think about a plane vertically, and the tilt of the wheel, the top of the wheel tilting out or tilting in, that's camber. What Tesla has select, decided to do is they have a fixed negative, I believe it's 1.7 degrees of camber, um, if you will, hardwired into the suspension. Other parameters on the rear suspension are adjustable, but that isn't. And that's the cause of the, uh, basically the wheel is tilting in. The top of the wheel is tilting in. And what that does is the tire tends to ride on the inside edge more. I guess it's particularly in cornering, but in general, it, the wheel tends to ride more on the inside edge than the outside edge. And as a result, the inside edge of the rear tires wears faster. The solution is to install some uh, upper control arms that are adjustable. And that's what these are. And they came from Unplugged Performance. And I'm gonna be going through the process of replacing these. I should also point it out that I'm using the instructions off the Fix Your Tesla website. Uh, that's these down here, uh, which has a, a really comprehensive set of the factory uh, repair instructions. They have full repair manuals, in this case for a Model X. So I'm gonna follow the instructions here. Um, really to summarize, there's two bolts involved that have to be re removed. It's, it's seemingly fairly straightforward. There is a ride height sensor that plugs into here that I'm gonna have to transfer over, or at least the attachment point for the ride height sensor that I'll have to transfer over to these arms. I'm hoping, and I'll check this once I get the old one of the old arms off, that these arms have already been set to the stock length. And then you can see these, um, the, the bolt and these nuts on this. Uh, that's how an alignment shop will be able to actually set the camber of the rear tires. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to figure out what the ride height is. I'm going to use this at the very end of this process to, uh, when I tighten up the uh, link bolts. And the link bolts have to be tightened up with the wheel at its nominal ride height, but the vehicle is going to be jacked up. So it's, it's not possible to tighten those bolts with the tire on, with the wheel sitting on the ground. 
So what I've done here is I've put some green tape on either side of the wheel and I popped off, this is the back wheel, and I popped off the center cap. So what, I'm, what I've done is I've taken a long spirit level and I set it up against the side of the vehicle across the tire like this and I I try to get the 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 edge of the center the top edge centered on that uh, centered on the uh, the post at the center of the wheel inside there and I want this the bubble to be level there and there and when I get that achieved then I put a mark and I've already done it actually it's a little tricky to do and then I mark the ends of this uh, of the level on the wheel wells on the green tape and that will give me a guide later on for what how high I need to jack up the uh, the hub in order to finally tighten the uh, link bolts. And like I said, I've already done it here. I, it's, it's a tricky bit to do, even with two hands. But uh, essentially, this is the process, and I'm going to do it on the other side as well. And it's something that I haven't seen in the other videos, So, uh, but it's something seemingly you really have to do. Now I've got the vehicle jacked up and I've got it up on jack stands and these are the uh, uh, the jack point jack stands. I bought these a few months ago. Um, I think there's another brand. These This is the brand that the Tesla mobile service guys use and I I do recommend them. They're, they're, there are not many options for being able to jack up the car and put it, up, put it on a jack stand because there are only four jack points on these things. I have it in jack, in, in jack mode and I'm about to take the tire off. One thing I want to point out, I don't know if people know about this, uh, this is a little tool that Tesla sells, I think off their website, that's used to take those chrome uh, nut covers off. And in fact, I have an Audi, and it works great on the Audi, because the Audi uses uh, lug nut covers. So it gets, it gets double, double use. So I'd recommend if you're going to, if you're going to do anything with tires on these, to go ahead, go to the, go to the website and buy one of these and they're not very expensive I think they're a few bucks five bucks or something like that uh, and they do have one front tire chopped for safety so the thing can't can't move so now I'm going to go ahead and pop the wheel off which I'm sure these uh, some people have seen not very exciting and then we'll go to the next step wheels off now, right here in the center, and I'll point it out with the light. Okay, here is the arm that I'm going to have to replace, right here. This is the ride sensor, and I think I'm going to do is unbolt it from this side and just gently pop it out. I think it's got, yeah, it looks like it's got flats, uh, so I can grab it on this side with a, an adjustable wrench and then get the other side, loosen that nut with a, a socket. The two bolts that I have to take out is that one back there, across there, and then there's a bolt right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and see about getting those loose. And I've got a, 
<laughs> I have a magnetic light, but it turns out there's very little steel around here. So it's kind of a, <sighs> Tesla hasn't made this, it hasn't made this easy because so much of this car is aluminum. There, I think I just, I just mounted the, the light on the uh, rotor and that seems to be working fairly well. And so the next step now is I'm gonna disconnect the ride sensor. And I'm gonna take a look at how that is oriented. Let's see one of the other one of the other control arms here. So you can see how it's kind of dropping down. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put it in like that. These these are these these arms seem to be symmetric. They don't seem to have a, a, a left side and a right side, and they're not marked left or right. I think there's another manufacturer out there. I don't recall the name. They have a slightly different design, and I think they have uh, a left and right hand version of their arms, but these don't seem to have any handedness. But just looking at this, I think what I want to do is I want to put it in like that with, with this thing kind of pointing down to match up with where the sensor is. So it's going to end up almost like that. So now I've disconnected the, uh, the ride sensor and it's a 10 millimeter nut and I didn't disconnect the bolt from the plastic link to the ride sensor. I don't think this is the ride sensor itself. I decided I would just gently pull it out and leave everything connected so I didn't have to risk breaking any of those plastic parts. I've decided to take the back nut off first because it looks like it's the hardest and it has become kind of a challenge. Uh, so it's an 18 millimeter head. Um, it's a bolt and, and a nut. Um, the bolt's on the left, the nut's on the right here. So what I've ended up doing, I have a half inch breaker bar and I put an impact, 18 millimeter impact socket on that. And then I have uh, an 18 millimeter gear wrench and I'm doing a little cheater trick to get a little bit more leverage on the nut. So I've kind of doubled up wrenches here. Give me a little uh, uh, longer throw arm, more torque to loosen the nut. And it is working. It is, I am, I am able to uh, and you can hear it click. I am able to get the uh, the nut loose back there. It's kind of tight, kind of tight quarters, but it, oops, it is coming off. I'm going to have to keep doing this with my uh, with both hands here. But just to show, this is what you have to do to get that back nut out. So I've just backed out the, the front bolt. That's a 15 millimeter bolt. And what I found was that that bolt back there, though I've got the nut loose, the bolt doesn't really want to come out. So I'm guessing that if I get this bolt out, there's going to be a little sag on the, the hub assembly. Um, in fact, I might even throw a jack. Maybe I should throw a little jack underneath that. Uh, used my uh, my impact driver. Use the impact driver with a 15 millimeter impact socket on it, and it it came free pretty pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I'll see. Maybe I'm going to put a jack underneath this thing and jack it up just a little to take the the strain off of that arm and see if the bolts come out a little easier. Okay. After a bit of scary, scary moments, I got the upper control arm out. But the scary part here, oh, where's my light? 
Okay, the scary part here is that it would not release up here. It would not release here. Okay. So uh, I tried. I tried actually using a piece of wood and a hammer to push this down, but it almost looks like this bracket actually tapers a bit. So it gets narrower at the bottom, which is just all sorts of what the hell. Now let me get this over here where you can actually see. So uh, it looked like this thing tapered. So I still had the front kind of engaged, but I couldn't get the front out either. So in a sense, I was giving up and I was going to try to put it back <laughs> the way it was and I couldn't get this thing to move. So what I did was I took the jack and I took a piece of wood and stuck it up down there through a hole such that it would hit the bottom of it would hit the bottom of this up here at this end. It was like this and then tried to push it back into place. But in the process of doing that, the front popped out down here. Right. The front popped out of here. So uh, I wiggled a little bit and the top finally popped out. So, so there's that. So I got that control arm out. Now, aha. Uh -huh. The next problem, the next problem I've got to face here is that, let me get a, um, so there's the back bracket and here's the front bracket. So here's the new, the new arm. And I decided I was going to put it in like that. Well, I mean, if you put it in, if you, I guess, Now, you could put it in like that, I guess. Um, the, the, I guess the problem I see is that you can't... Uh, I'm not sure they can get to the nuts if I put it in that way. Oh yeah, see how the, nut, the nuts get obscured by the, the, by the steel, by the hub fittings. So it really, to, to make this thing at all adjustable, it's got to go. It's got to go in with those to the back like this so that there's room for, for the for the guy doing the the alignment to get to them okay so we just lay this down into here oh great it's it's actually fitting first time I tried this a little bit ago it didn't didn't really fit and now it seems to be fitting just fine just great okay but here's here's the next little what the hell? See the misalignment up there? It's not going right back into that bracket. So I'm going to have to play around a little bit. And again, I'm going to need both hands here. But this one seems to be going in okay. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the bolt in the front and just tighten it just loose so that this thing at least is kind of held. And I'm going to see if I can. Maybe if I jack the, the hub up here, I can get the, uh, the assembly to move forward a little bit, and I can pop that in back there. So on to the next chapter. One thing before I put the, the new arms in is I wanted to compare length, okay? I mean, nominally, uh, the... Um, the holes, the gap between the holes, should be the same. So if I look down in here, that I've got the holes pretty much lined up. In fact, now here, I'm going to do something. I'm going to click on the fly, as if I actually know what the hell I'm doing here. So if I sh if I shine a light down there now, um, those holes line up pretty well. Okay, now if I come down to this hole, it's 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 like this the the new one is just a little bit short. 
So I think I'm going to dink with this just a little bit and get it to line up um, the way it's supposed to. So that means a couple a couple more wrench. I got to go figure out what these bolts are and and play a little bit with that. Even better way to do this. Okay, so this is this is the this is nominally the front bolt. And that's actually how I'm going to do it. This is going to be the front, that's going to be the back. So here's the front bolt, and the front bolt is going all the way through. Well, let me make sure. Actually. Yeah, it's going through. Okay, fine. It's going through. However, this one, this one, doesn't go as far. See how much different the height is? Now here. See how much different the height is on those two bolts? So this one, I don't think this one is not going through. Kind of jamming in there too. It's just lovely. Yeah, so this one, so I do have to adjust this thing. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, go loosen this a little bit and just spread this out just a hair to the point where this bolt will actually drop into that hole. And that should give me the, the right length. Okay, so I loosen these two jam nuts. Now this one is, this one's actually um, left hand thread, right? That, that actually makes sense because what the guy's gonna do is he loosens these two bolts and then uses this one to either pull these together or push them apart. And as it turns out, if you, in this case, you rotate it this way, these separate, and now what I have is I have this bolt and this bolt all the way through. So what I'm, and I've got it set up basically on top of the, the, the old one. Okay, so it's making contact, I don't know if you can see like that. Okay, so that means that 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 these this thing isn't twisted. One end isn't twisted with respect to the other. They should be sitting. They should be straight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten these lock nuts up, and then try to go put this thing on the car. Uh, obviously, I'm not a pro mechanic, but let's go on with this show. Okay. <laughs> So I tried bolting the, uh, the arm in at the, at the front, at the outside, and then tried to get the, the thing to go up into the bracket back there, and that didn't work. Okay, it's kind of not, okay. Okay, so what I'm, so what I did was I actually went back there with a crescent wrench, big crescent wrench, and I actually bent those flaps out just a little bit, just widened that gap just a little bit. So now what I'm finding is that I can slip that in back there, and I think he said being a little, a little silly. Look at that, it dropped in. Now, I'm actually taking advantage though of the fact that there's a, there's a, uh, a swivel point here because if you look at that carefully, this arm is not quite lined up with that arm. So I'm actually taking a little bit of advantage here. Now I do have this thing jacked up again. I've got it lifted up again. Uh, so, I think what I can do now is I can actually get the bolts in and and the idea at this point is to put the bolts in and snug them up but just just a little bit they're not to be snugged up until I set the, the height of this hub assembly remember I, I made these these marks out here so I'm going to take that straight edge I'm going to jack this, that once I get this arm installed and bolted in, uh, but not tight, then I'm going to uh, jack this thing up and use a straight edge 
to uh, find the right height of this point that I was looking at when I set those marks. And then I should be able to torque the, uh, the mounting bolts down. Wow. This, is, this has been more of a struggle than I thought it was going to be. So it goes. Anyway, I'll progress. So the next step, the final step, or at least part of the final step, is I've now jacked up the, uh, the hub to the right height. So I used, again, I used those marks I made, and I came across here with this, this ruler, like this. I don't know if I can hold it in just the right spot. And then if you sight across the ruler, that's just about, it might even be a little bit high. But this, this ruler is hard, hard to hold. <laughs> Use the phone as an adjustment device. So that's pretty, pretty fucking close to, to being on the center of the hub. And I'll, I'll take that. Now you notice that I had to switch to my big jack. I gave up on the little jack. I found it didn't have enough throw. So I'm lifting up on the bottom of the disc. I'm not lifting up on the dust guard. Okay. I'm lifting up on the bottom of the disc. So I got a piece of wood there. It's lifting up on that, you know, between the disc and the jack. And I'm lifting up on there. And I had to lift this up quite a ways. Now, now look at my situation here as far as accessing that nut and that bolt back there. Uh, it's gotten pretty pretty tight. In fact, what I think I'm going to have to do is I've got I've got to get an extension for my um, torque wrench so that I can go in through this little hole here, this little gap here to the side, and, uh, and hopefully I can get the, the torque wrench back there. Um, the spec is 130 newton meters on that back bolt and 140 on the front, which turns out to be a and uh, furlongs per fortnight. It's 103 foot pounds for the back bolt and 96 foot pounds for the front. So, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and try now to get the, those uh, torque set on these bolts and then I'm done with this wheel. I gotta go do the other one, but I won't, I probably won't film that one. Um, so, stand by. Okay, epilogue. Um, I've now dropped the, I've tightened the bolts. Um, the problem I ran into is that back bolt with the hub up to the height it needed to be it was just too difficult to get my uh, torque wrench back there. I tried from beneath. I couldn't get, I couldn't find a way to do it. I have to go buy some more sockets or something. So what I've elected to do is I just got that bolt back there really tight, as tight as I could. And then uh, when I go to get this thing aligned, I'll just tell them to um, just check the, the tightness of that bolt. The front bolt was no problem. I've got that torqued to uh, 96 foot-pounds, which is the spec. The one thing that bothers me a little bit about this is if you look at the, the two arms, the two halves of the arms, they're not, they're, they're well, actually, they're better than they were, but um, they, they were rotated a little bit. They actually look straighter now. Now that I've, now that I've got the, um, I released the jack, let the thing drop. That arm looks straighter than it did when it was up, up at, uh, at, at height, which is, mm, I don't know how much of a problem that's going to be. I'll have to talk to the, the alignment guys when I get this thing aligned. So, yeah, this has taken a few hours. Uh, I thought it was going to be, huh, <laughs> 
I thought it was going to be take the tire off, pull two bolts, pull it out, put it in, and, uh, and then put it up in the air and, or, uh, you know, get it up at ride height, tighten the bolts, done. Sounded simple. Well, it's really not. There's just, especially that back bolt is not, not a lot of clearance and then getting the old arm out, uh, it was a lot more work than I expected it to. I've got to go do this, the other side now. And uh, hoping the, with the lessons I've learned from doing this side, it's going to go a little bit better. So, I don't know. Uh, anybody have any comments, post them below. Uh, I appreciate it. Like I said, the next step in this is to go get it aligned and uh, take advantage of the, the adjustable uh, camber feature. Uh, I did reconnect the uh, the right height sensor. Um, that's one of those things I wonder with, with that arm twists a little bit whether you know how it's sensing the right height may uh, may may differ. It's going to be interesting. And un unfortunately, unplugged performance doesn't have a phone number. I think that's a big drawback. I can't call them to get advice about this. All I can do is. Uh, basically send them e an email or a message off their website through their website and I asked them to call me back right away and well I haven't heard back from them and they're they're definitely open today uh, being as it's a Tuesday so anyway um, I guess thanks for watching the the struggle and uh, hope this has been informative at least some people. Thanks much.